Linda, what's the first step in writing a screenplay? It's getting the idea. It's sitting down and it's pulling out from you and it's beginning to, you know, pull the material together. Uh, many times people do outline, sometimes they do treatment, sometimes they just get a couple paragraphs of a story and then look at it and say, do I actually have a beginning, middle, and end, and do I have a story? So many people think that they have the next big idea, which uh -huh. is great, and they're enthusiastic about it. When should they then let others know so they can bounce that not, idea? Not too quickly, because you, you need to sort of feel your way through it. It's not like it comes to you full-blown, generally. So you, you shouldn't hurry the process. Now, sometimes you might say, I have five ideas, and you write them all in one paragraph, and then you say, well, which one is the best? Maybe at that point you might ask somebody to say, what do you see going on here? I'm not sure what direction. But if you really have something pushing at you, you know, something that's really heating up, there's an advantage to working it out a bit and not letting people get in too early because you don't want criticism too early. You want the flow, is, and you want the excitement and the passion and finding your way. And even through a draft or two, you're probably still finding your way to the story. But then there is a point. You do need that verification or evaluation from somebody outside yourself. And who would that be? Because a mother, a father, sister, brother yes, yes. probably will say good things. Yes, yes, yes. Well, one of the first things to do is to have friends who are writers and make sure that they are constructive. So you don't want to give this to somebody who reads your script and says, oh, no. You want to read it to someone and say, OK, I can see exactly where it soars. I sometimes recommend that uh, readers look for where are they excited? Where are they reading it and they feeling the flow? Because it may not flow all the way through yet. It still has to be rewritten. At some point, many people do go to a script consultant. And a script consultant is meant to be the objective professional eye. And again, you want to find a positive, constructive script consultant, not someone who's there to tear it apart. You're there, they're supposed to be there to build it up instead. If you were to arm a screenwriter with one tool or weapon in terms of screenwriting, what would it be? Uh, I'd say imagination is to be, have a flexible mind, to be willing to consider alternatives, to recognize that part of the screenwriter's job is to troubleshoot and to problem solve. And that creativity and imagination and the ability to say, well, you know, I don't have to set it in Chicago. What if I set it in Orlando, Florida instead? What if? What if is a wonderful tool to ask yourself? What if instead of being by the seaside, it was in the, we're in the mountains? What if instead of a Porsche, it were an old rattletrap Ford? That reversal, that flexibility of thinking is what's really important because someone's going to get to the rewrite or you're going to have a script consultant or a director or a producer or an actor say, this doesn't work, what about? And you want your mind to be able to move with that and for you to have an open mind. But on the other hand, not to just let anyone walk ramshot over your script. Because there's a lot of people that will read a script and want to practice their own creativity on your work. You said you have to be careful, but you also have to be open. How would we know someone like that? Like, how would we know the signs that it's actually someone working out their own when, process? When your gut goes, mm, you know, it, so, something usually gets roiled up that just doesn't feel right to you or to your intention for the script. So sometimes somebody comes along and they say, well, what if instead of a thriller it were horror? And you say, no, you know what, I don't like horror. And so you have to know that. And, and it does take some time to recognize. And it also takes some time to recognize that sometimes when people are, are throwing out these ideas, they are recognizing a problem, but they don't know how to identify the problem. So one of the things is that problem analysis, even more than solution, is important. Because most people, when they, when they realize what the problem is, many times they can solve it. 
It's just they're kind of lost, and you do lose your objectivity, and it's hard, I mean, it is hard to find your way many times. Can you talk about writing a script week one versus <laughs> the last week? What that's like? The stress is involved, the highs, the lows? Well, many writers, they get very stressed all the way through. <laughs> and there is a sense where you recognize that the process is the process. It's, it's not meant to be smooth, but you learn to say, I'm in process. It's OK. I know this scene doesn't work. It's OK for it not to work today. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to go back. and you know, rework. And of course, toward the end, many times you're doing small things like doing word changes, saying this word has more resonance than that word. That's a better choice. So you're rewriting all the way through. And there is a point when you feel good, and then you get it evaluated, or you get somebody else to read it. I say, oh my, that is just wonderful. Or here's eight notes. But don't do more. And I've worked on many scripts where I've said, don't do any more than this because this is working. And don't futz with it. Don't, don't play around and say, let, you know, say, there's a point you have to realize. Let it go. Now, maybe in the process as actors come in, there's going to be changes or a director. But there is a point you say, you know, I think I've done the best I can, and I think it works. The screenwriter said, hey, can I take you to coffee and have you give me some tips on selling my screenplay, what would you say? Well, a lot of selling is who do you know? And I would encourage people, uh, first of all, I would encourage people to submit their screenplays to, to screenwriting competitions. When you start getting a first place or a second or third, particularly in the big ones, the agents will come after you. Maybe a producer will come after you. So that's one thing to do. Another thing is to make relationships. It is amazing how many people that you meet one year pay off five years later. Uh, I, I just ran into somebody here that I knew as an executive like 20, 25 years ago. And she says, remember when we used to have lunch together? And I said, oh, yeah. And I got a phone call some time ago from a vice president of CIA, the agency. She says, Linda, remember we knew each other when we were both starting out. If you have any people you want to send my way, I'm open to that. And so these things many times take a long time. But the other thing to remember is that people are not just there to be your opportunity. People are there because you really like them. And then you find over a period of time that things start to you know, develop and you want to work together because you enjoy and you truly like each other. And I, I think another thing that's really important is to be generous. There is a tendency to see this business as a competition rather than a collaboration. And I think changing the way you see that becomes a real breakthrough. And that's for writers, that's for anybody in this business. We, as a speaker, these people are fabulous colleagues of mine. And when I started out as a speaker and writing books, and but I felt competitive until one of my, uh, one of my uh, colleagues said to me, you know, there's these seminar wars going on on who's the big guru and who's the god of screenwriting. And he says, I think it's ridiculous. And I thought, I think you're right. I've got to, we've got to all change our attitudes. And it's a joy to be at Story Expo because I'm seeing my colleagues and I'm meeting some new people. And I say, yeah, I'm really glad I got over that. And I think that's what writers need to do, relate to each other and be generous with each other. So Linda, let's say you're at a place where you're not about competition as much. You've let mm -hmm. some of that go. But you're sensing from someone else that they more about that. What's an approach with these types is of Is to affirm them. Because many times people feel competitive because of the negatives and when you put the positive in. And to say, for instance, you are so good at style, or you are so funny, or you are, I mean, almost anything that says, I'm not going to get hooked up by your insecurity. And I want to give above that. 
we, we have a saying in my office that we treat everyone as human beings even if they don't act like, like one. <laughs> Once in a while people don't act like human beings. Say, nevertheless, you treat them as a human being with respect and you build them up and you nurture them and you, you help make them feel good about themselves because that competition comes from insecurity. And, and I mean, we all go there. We all go those places. The big thing is, is to fight it and to just say, I don't want to live here. I don't, and um, I, I've been very interested in this subject. I wrote a book on this subject called The Better Way to Win, Connecting Not Competing for Success, because I saw so much and I worked so hard to overcome this inside myself and I began to study this whole idea of competitive thinking so then I'm going to write a book on it. So it's one of my non-screenwriting books. Right on. A lesson about yourself that you're almost embarrassed to admit that it took <laughs> you so long to realize. That's well, I think we just talked about that. It was getting over my competitive feelings, and they were really gnawing at me. And I worked really, really hard at that. In the 1980s, when I started, was when those feelings were coming up. And I just resisted them. I, I prayed about them. I'm a spiritual person. And I just found, you know, I, I just said, I don't want to live here. And, and I would say that was probably my biggest lesson in the business. Say, I, I don't want to go there. And they do pop up once in a while. And I just say, don't want to go there. No, we're not going to go there. No, <laughs> we're not going to do this. I think, too, we're in an age of social media where now people can be competitive behind their screen and say, oh, well, what's so-and-so working on? And there's a, there's a yes. temptation to indulge ourselves. How do we stop that and say, you know what, I'm just going to focus on my life. Yeah. Whatever they're doing is great for them. Yes, yeah. And I mean, I think that's just what you do is you sit down and you breathe deeply. <laughs> there's a lot of breathing deeply. That's very important. And just say, what am I about? And there is a thing, it's so easy to fall into that, to, to get off track. And w one of the things I often say to myself, am I telling the truth? Am I staying true to my calling? And so if I stay true, you know, whether we call it our, where we're being led or called or however we want to say that, our mission in life, our objective, our goal, whatever, if we stay on that track, I think that's where we stay safe. And it, so it becomes very important not to let somebody else push us off that. And, and sometimes that means it takes a day to answer an email that's trying to do it or to just sit down. And then I got my favorite rocking chair in our sitting room and I just sit down and say, okay, take a deep breath. I'm not going to go there. That is, not, that is not where the good or that's not where the value lies and it's not where I want to live but it is work you know it is is work to keep saying yes we're not going to be there what's the most common mistake a new screenwriter makes well one thing is is to think that there's just one draft and that it's going to flow out of them and that there's nothing to learn as opposed to that sense of a process but there is a very fine balance between one's art and one's craft. The place that the flow happens, the place where you feel your voice is being, coming out, and the shaping of the voice, the shaping of what that artistic form is. And it, um, one has to be careful about that balance because you learn a lot about craft, but it is, this is an art form. It's not a paint by numbers, it's not saying, Oh, my first turning point is on page 27 instead of 32. Oh, my. is say, well, let's look more carefully because maybe you're exactly in the right place for that. And so um, there can be when people take seminars or read books, they can get into the paint by numbers. Or on the other hand, you can have people who are you know, so into their art that they don't want to learn. And I always say, you can't use it if you don't know it. So knowledge doesn't hurt you. It just has to be put in its right place. 
And then there's the danger of thinking that that first screenplay is going to be the million dollar idea we've been yes. hearing this weekend. This is Your a, this is a work through. And I know that when I write my nonfiction books, um, I presume every chapter will be rewritten at least five, a minimum, but generally about 10 times. That'll be gone over and over. I asked an Emmy Awards winning screenwriter once, I said, how many times do you rewrite? And she said, well, this morning I rewrote the scene 22 times. And my guess is she probably was, whether 22 was because she was a comedy writer, but my guess is it wasn't four times. And going over and over and saying this word resonates better or not having this line of dialogue but having an image instead or having a reaction, oh yeah, that is better. And so you, you massage, I mean, you, you really are reworking and reworking and reworking. And sometimes people think, well, the great writers, I guess it just flows. And you say, no, the great writers are probably rewriting more than the merely good writers and get used to the rewrite process and get used to feedback and get used to honing and tweaking and recognize that's the process. You mentioned earlier about a writer finding their own true voice within their work. How did you find yours? Well, I came out of theater and when I was first in theater, I presumed everyone in theater would become an actor. But I wasn't a very good actor. And I even took private lessons. And my acting teacher said, this is not natural to you. She says, now, if you want to work through whatever block you have, you know, you can. We can work on that. But she said, you know, other people, is this flows out of them much more. And I began to recognize that it was in the field of first directing and then literature, and then I developed this method. In graduate school, it became the method that I use for my consulting. And when I started consulting, I realized it brought together all these different parts of me. I had a good psychology background, so I understood the writer. I had studied creativity several years. I knew about my own creativity, and it helped me understand their creativity. And I realized I was a nurturer. I, I was very good at nurturing that creativity out of other people. And then when I started my business, I, I sort of just went for it. And I went to a very good career consultant who helped me affirm that voice. And along the way, I had a, a mentor, an excellent teacher in graduate school, that kind of, rather than saying you go down this path, he would watch the paths I was going down and he would encourage me. And he, would t he taught me how to be bold. Don't be afraid to go out on a limb. Don't be afraid. If you're at something, you check it, you know, if, to a certain extent. But it says, don't be afraid. And so I began to be much better about stepping out and finding my own way. And the more I could get out of that co competition and just say, look, I'm only called to be me. I'm not asked to be anything else and and I would go astray and thankfully I had some good friends that would say do you really want the red Porsche above anything else in the world or is there something stronger and I I think sometimes you keep saying what is exactly my goal and you work at defining that I mean if somebody said what is my life about I would say my life is about nurturing creativity and spirituality and I see that these things come together. And so, I mean, I have this odd degree, a, a doctorate in drama and theology, which is the least marketable degree you could get in the world. But in terms of the integration, I think so many writers want to do something important. I say, why do we write? We write because we want to change the world. We want to inspire. We want to examine and explore and express the human condition. And, you know, so we, we let that kind of flow out of us. So you keep your mind on the bigger goal and you think, what am I about? And I just have to stay true to that. And, you know, and, and sometimes just to learn to phrase what it is that I am about. What's my, what's my mission or what's important here? And that helps competition within our, because sometimes even this competition, it could be solely within us, or it could be solely with someone else. But it yes. sounds like once you define that, 
You just yes. live by that kind of code. Yes, and, and we help each other a lot. Um, my colleagues and I, especially several of them, we, we call and sometimes when we feel that sense, of, whether it's competition or anger or we're peeved about something, we call the other person and say, okay, I got to work through this. And so I have several colleagues and, and sometimes I, I call, you know, like Pamela J. Smith, and I said, I have to be catty for about 30 seconds. And Pamela <laughs> says, meow, go ahead, my dear. And so there are times that you do, I mean, you do have those feelings. And I never want to negate that one has those feelings. But what I do is I have several colleagues that are on call. And when I call them, and say, I just have to be kind of my ugly self for a moment here. Is that okay? Like, oh, yes, honey, go right ahead. Okay, got it out of my system. Okay, because I will have those feelings at times and whatever those feelings are, uncertainty, insecurity, you know, anger. <laughs> we can go on and on about what those are and say, so yes, having somebody to talk to, having good colleagues, uh, really valuing those relationships and being there to be generous to each other and to help each other, to recommend jobs for each other, to, to see what we can do for each other, knowing we all have our part to play in this whole industry.